Hey, it's Simon of the Prove Guy, and I'm here with Dick Valentine from the Electric Six. And we're going to do a little talk about inspiration. So, before we start, can you give the audience a little idea of who you are? Who I am? I'm I'm Dick Valentine. I'm I'm an Electric Six. Um, I've been doing this professionally for uh, 14 years now. Uh, yeah, going on year 15 of being a professional entertainer. This is your first time in Oma. First time in Oma. Uh, long time listener. First time caller. Good. Yep. Jerry Ross. Yeah. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry Ross made it happen. Um, I I met Jerry um, at several shows and uh, you know I, I you know, liken him to a tenacious ferret. Good. Yeah. Uh, Jerry brings us into what I wanted to talk to you about. Jerry, to me, Jerry's someone I've known for a few years, and that he has taken part in many random things that people just like. He was a stand-up comedian. He decided to be an escort. Like he does anything that he just says yes. I think that's something that's important if you want to get anywhere in the, in this type of industry, or if you want to get anywhere in life. When you say escort, do you mean like like uh, like sexual favors, or, or, or I'm not sure if he sexually favored them, but he escorted people to a stage. You, what you, he did after that? Well, no, but I mean, okay, so that is it just a, is it a matter? He of wasn't an escort. Escort as in like the right. So uh, as an, isn't it? So you're just he's just basically extending his elbow as as as, a, yeah. as something you can study. So it's it's a G-rated escort. Yeah, because you know you never know when you, when you hear the word escort, you don't know that can mean a lot of things. So it's just not, yeah. Most most of Ireland will know what we mean. I'm not going to say what he escorted now that we talked about that, but right. most of Ireland will know exactly. So what he's tried he, he's tried many things. He's di he's dipped his. He's a trained gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Is the way that we would work it. Okay. Uh, so I was thinking that's what I try to do in my life is to teach people that they can do and be whatever they want in life. They can achieve anything, mm -hmm. literally anything <clears> that you want. So have you any? Anything that you would like to say, or any any way you would like to promote that sort of lifestyle to people? Well, um, I think you have to. You always have to be realistic, um, especially in music. If, if you know from where I come from, um, you all you know. I've always said that you um, you really, really in music need to have a plan B. Um, you you have to, because um, I've seen we've had a lot of bands support us over the years, and the ones that I think are amazing and, and like you know they're going to be stars someday, they end up going nowhere. We've had some really shitty ones. You know, like these guys suck, and then they end up like, you know, they end, we, you know, they end up doing stuff, and so, um, I can't predict it. I don't know what makes it. It's getting harder and harder for uh, a rock band to actually have a career these days. Um, you know, what with music becoming more electronic, you know, using DJs, and you know, it's the industry has figured out that it's easier to, to uh, support just like a, a single artist as opposed to a band. I guess yeah. that's the best way to do it. So. Um, uh, the, when you're the, saying the no, about yeah, but the number one advice I say is just always have a plan B. Understand that um, even though you're a great musician or a great singer or that, um, a lot of it really is beyond your control. A lot of it is right place, right time, who you know, when you know them. And that's exactly what happened with us. I mean, um, you know, I got my foot in the door, and I've worked really hard since I got my foot in the door. But I needed that foot in the door, and and you know, if if I lived in any other city besides Detroit at the time that uh, the scene exploded there, you know, I, I don't think I. I don't think I'd be sitting here right now. So when you say about having a plan B, do you think people with a plan B are more productive? They know, they understand how to run business and things like that better. So they, because they're not relying on that one, one thing. They can I'm just looking at it like you don't want to You don't want to be a burden to yourself and a burden to your family members later in life because you thought you were going to be a rock star. Um, that's a hundred percent of it. I'm just saying you need to take care of yourself and understand that um, just because you think you're awesome in music, I can't think about you know anything else. I can't speak for, but. Just because you think you're an awesome musician, you might be. Uh, there is no guarantee that that's, that means you're, you're going to go anywhere. So I'm just saying, from a standpoint of making sure that you in life are able to do something else and make money, that's my number one advice. Because I don't want anyone to, uh, to ever get disillusioned that if you do X X X X, then you'll be a millionaire someday. Because it's, yeah. it's just that's the reality of it. That's the same in any business. Like when sure. I do the public speaking and things like that, people think they're a great speaker, and that's all they're focused on. So they've nothing to fall back on whenever. Right, that exactly. doesn't yeah. that doesn't work out. Yep. Whenever you got your big break, you obviously had to then. That was when the real work came, and then you had to keep, like, working hard at you at your craft so that you became the level that you were at. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, no, the level, the, the highest level we ever got to uh, just came uh, quickly, and and you know uh, we got our record, our big record deal, and then in eight months later, after just doing a music video and like. Um, yeah, it was our first album that that just kind of we went from zero to being on the radio and stuff, and then we it was a steady slow trajectory downward. But I think we did a really good job of using that downward trajectory to kind of build ourselves up to what we have now, which is like a cult following. Um, so one thing we've done really well 
it was learned how to understand that going down, like, you know, if you start here and you go up here, this isn't such a bad place. So yeah. um, I think, and I, I've seen historically a lot of entertainers and bands and stuff, they just expect if I, I got to keep going up and if I start going down, then I'm a loser and I just need to quit everything. So, um, you yeah, know, we never looked at it that way. We always looked at like, well, we started here, we went here, we're here now, this is awesome. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how we uh, that's how we looked at it. Whenever you were saying you've got a cult following, do you think that's down to how open you are with your fans and how willing you are to speak to fans and engage with them? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, uh, it just it, we play smaller rooms. Um, we've never been the sort of band to um, run with like a security detail or anything like that. We were, we're very DIY. We load our own gear. We don't have a sound guy. And then, of course, in the age of social media. Um, you know, I, I always, if somebody chats me up, I mean, no matter how ridiculous the conversation is, I, I always engage because, you know, sometimes I just have fun with it. Like, you know, I'm like, this person's an idiot, but I'm going to talk to them anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's over the years, um, and as much touring as we do, we take the gigs because uh, we, we like the money. And, but um, along the way, you meet some really great people. And I made, you know, that's, you know, as valuable as the money has been, has been how many friends I've made all over the world uh, as part of this band. So, um, yeah, I think, I, think it's, I think it's part of it. So what's your final advice for the people listening, what they should do for themselves to improve their life? Oh, uh, to improve your life. Uh, yeah. um, uh, geez, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an extreme of, um, make the best of everything. Um, I'm, I'm not a nitpicker. I'm not an improver at all. Like I, I look at, I look at, like, I don't have OCD right now. Look at this. This looks just fine to me. And I understand that you know, there are people out there that need to rearrange everything and it's just never yeah. it. So I guess, you know, uh, I, I've always just been happy uh, being a glasses half full person and you know, making the best of every day. Um, but one thing I've found in music is, you know, a lot of people are not like that. There's a whole lot of OCD out there. Um, people need everything just so. Um, people are constantly looking to make things that much better and I've never, I've never rolled that way. So uh, uh, my advice to someone like that is chill the fuck out. Good. Thank you very much. No problem. Pleasure. Yeah.